Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabari here. Since I previously reviewed The Fall in Our Stars, which is based on the best-selling novel by John Green, which is a charming but very sad romantic drama, uh, I decided to review another movie that's from the same team behind it. And that is called Paper Towns. It's a coming-of-age story about a young man who has a, a childhood friend that they lived next door with each other ever since until suddenly she decided to disappear into thin air you know, leaving out some clues and all this other stuff in order for him to find her Yeah. and this is the blu-ray that I picked up at Dollar Tree for only a dollar uh, definitely worth it I mean, I was actually going to buy this along with The Fallen or Stars, as well as all the other titles that I could find. But I couldn't find The Fallen or Stars anywhere until recently at CVS Pharmacy. Yes, the drugstore. So that was the only way to find that. But I was lucky to get this. Apparently enough, I did actually got this on DVD as well. I actually showed it to you on, on Facebook and Instagram. But well, I'm just going to show you the Blu-ray instead for now, because I might as well. Because it doesn't contain the DVD, and it also has a digital copy as well. Um, like the Fallen Earth Stars, this also has some different packaging too that they went for. Um, it comes with um, a post-it uh, pad right here. Uh, it has some stickers. There's actually two of them, actually. Uh, hold on. There's, yeah, there's two of them right here. Just one of those pins where it says, Want to go or been there. Yeah, all blue and, and red. Uh, just shows you a map about where you want to go. Right here. Just, just an advertisement. Uh... Yeah, digital code which I already used and here's the DVD it has a different um, artwork and the blu-ray this actual artwork that they use with the pin so. <laughs> okay I gotta put them all back again this is always the difficult part to put everything back uh, sorry, but that's just how it has to go, and it has to be, alright, um, surprisingly, um, this movie grossed over 85 million worldwide out of its 12 million budget, so it was a sleeper hit, not a huge hit, but a sleeper. Because it was going up against films like uh, Ant-Man and Mission Impossible uh, Rogue Nation. So, because this was the big hit of the summer for those two films. Um, it got mixed reviews from critics, uh, unlike The Fall Under Stars, which actually got a lot of positive feedback um, for Rotten Tomatoes. Got a certified fresh of that film, but this one only gets 57%. And I'm sorry it doesn't deserve that. I mean, we're not expecting this movie to be like The Fallen or Stars. This is a whole uh, different movie. Because it's basically a mystery. But it's also a comedy and drama as well. Um, but it has the two stars. Um, Nat Wolf, who just previously was in the movie The Fallen or Stars. You know, who played Isaac, you know, the blind guy of Augustus Waters best best friend and Carla Delevingne right here who later went on to do the film Suicide Squad and Ballerin she's an English uh, model she's also a singer too so I I think she really went pretty well to play this role I mean she uses her American accent to play uh, the character so they both played uh, Margot and Quentin, or Q. 
And by the way, this Blu-ray right here does have a lot of great special features, um, as you can see on the back. It has deleted scenes, an alternate scene with the making of Paper Towns, 21 minutes, so it's a lot longer compared to uh, the Fallen Earth stores. It has a gag reel, hard to believe, and even has the lightning rounds. It has two lightning rounds with John Green and Nat Wolf along with Carla de Levine has a photo gallery and a whole lot more <laughs> and that's it <laughs> um, doesn't have an extended edition as I expected to be but that's okay I can live with it because that's the way it was meant to be <laughs> so uh, let's get to the review stars so Nat Wolf uh, Carla de Levine um, Halston Sage uh, Josia Sirio, um, Hannah Olgood, Allison Abrams, Kendall McIntyre, Justice Smith, yes, Justice Smith from Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom. He's going to later be in the film Detective Pikachu, he had a new Pokemon live action film. Uh, Jazz Sinclair, Carlo Brando, Griffin Freeman. Caitlin Carver, May Crosby, Susan Mackey Miller, Tom Hillman, R.J. Scherer, with a cameo appearance by Enzo Elgort, yeah, he's in the movie, with John Green, the author of the book, providing his voice as well, as Rebecca's father. <laughs> Yeah, it's written by Scott Neustadler and Michael H. Reber, and it's directed by Jake Schreiber. The movie begins when we meet a young man named Quinn Jaberson, nicknamed Q, who's played by Nat Wolf, who lives across the street from the girl next door named Marco Ralph Spiegelman, who's played by Carla Delevingne, in a subdivision known as Jefferson Park at Orlando, Florida. She is a childhood friend whom he had drifted over nine years after they discovered a dead body of a local man named Robert Joyner, who's played by Lane Lovegrove, who committed suicide after his divorce. Known to Margot, Quinn has been infatuated with her ever since they became neighbors. So after reaching adolescence, Margot became one of the popular girls in Jefferson High School. Through her adventurous reputation, you know, she's pretty awkward at times and wacky and crazy, but you get the idea. <laughs> but in contrast, uh, Quinn is a uh, kind but unassertive and very unpopular among his peers, but he also has two best friends who are outcast named Benjamin Starling and Marcus Lincoln, nicknamed Ben and Radar, both played by Austin Abrams and Justice Smith. So one night, I think like around uh, 2 a.m., Michael climbs through Quinn's window and recruits him for an all-night revenge road trip, which Margot discovers that her boyfriend Jason Werberton, played by Griffin Freeman, nicknamed Jace, was unfaithful to one of her friends, Rebecca Arlington, or nicknamed Becca, played by Caitlin Carver. So they went to um, BJ's uh, warehouse store, which is like Costco. They had to buy all the supplies, which include uh, saran wrap, even the uh, spray cans, and all this other stuff, so they can plot their revenge by humi by using all these humiliating pranks uh, on Jason and Rebecca, you know, through uh, her boyfriends, <laughs> yeah, as well as her friends. Yes, even uh, Margot's best friend, Lacey Pemberton, who's played by Halston Sage. But Margot accused uh, Lacey not telling her about the affair, which would really reveal that Lacey was unaware of the affair until she, she was pranked. So both uh, Quinn and Margot uh, were using all these pranks by starting with uh, her uh, disguising her voice by making a prank call towards... Uh, towards him and he runs around naked outside and it was all filmed straight into her cell phone. So 
so it can go viral. Uh, next thing you know, um, she started to wrap around uh, the entire uh, Boatswagen uh, Beetle with Saran Wrap, and she started using all these spray cans, you know, signing up uh, the letter M you know, for Margo, and putting all these post-it notes on there as well, so that way they'll know about what happened around, even in, in the, the friend's room, they steal something, and <laughs> all this other crazy stuff. Um, not to mention it even causes um, you know, the fodder to actually bring a shotgun and start shooting at them. So once they're done, um, they went um, straight all the way to uh, SunTrust uh, Bank Building. That's where her, one of her fodders uh, were sat you know, at the office. So I had to go all the way on top of, of the office, already closed, and then she was explaining about the paper towns that are around, and she was thinking about going there on her own. So that event gives Quinn hope that he will finally have a chance to develop a closer relationship with Margo and they begin to learn how to assess himself to, and to take chances. Hoping that maybe uh, Quinn will be able to see Margo again. But the next day Margo didn't came to school and after a few days some consider her missing. Others have concluded that she left for an undisclosed location but Margo's parents uh, would not report on her missing to the police because she had ran away before and believed that their daughter is going to come back eventually. But that wasn't the case. But then, uh, but after seeing a poster of Woody um, Guffrey, a singer, uh, that's posted on her bedroom wall, Quinn realized that Margo has been deliberately sending out some clues for him so to find out where she's going. So that's where he hired uh, Benjamin and Marcus to join in for a search party. So they're searching all of her clues through uh, Margo's bedroom, which <laughs> Quinn had to buy uh, Margo's sister, Rufy, played by Mae Crosby, to look throughout the entire room and see where he could find. But even he noticed that he started to see some clues hidden in the bedroom, like that's where he found the location about where she's at, which turned out to be a local uh, abandoned souvenir shop. So Quinn, along with um, Benjamin and Marcus, joins in for that search. That's where we get to see the notes, so that's all spray painted it um, even through the troll hole but that also led to problems because fortunately you know they were about to go to a, a local party uh, at Jason's house but Quinn decided not to go because he wants to continue his search he went back inside at night but still couldn't find her Hoping that he did, but it was just a dream. Got up, uh, got received a phone call from um, his friends, so he decided to go back to the party after all. Inside Jason's house, but then, just when they attended, um, Lacey argues with Rebecca over the betrayal of Margot with Jason, because of her loyalty to Margot and her revulsion towards uh, both Rebecca and Jason. Yeah, they're very promiscuous. Lacey had left in in disgust, wants up in the bathroom, laying down in the tub, with Quinn uh, just going in and finding out, and this is where they explain the problems beneath um, the exterior. We begin to find out that she is actually intelligent and a compassionate person, so they suddenly became friends. So after finding more clues, Quinn suddenly spotted a road trip map that leads to where she's at. So they had to go back to the souvenir shop to find out and this and, to, and Lacey joins in with uh, uh, Quinn, Benjamin and Marcus. So they were on their way but they had to drive through uh, Quinn's uh, SUV van. So, so they had a road trip 
uh, they went to the gas station just to get some supplies. Um, ben was already drunk, you know, through that party. You know, he had to make himself a, a sword. And afterwards, <laughs> he started uh, peeing on on those beer cans because, well, he had to go real bad. So, yes, they had to go to the gas station, you know, just to get some new shirts. And so they won't become a mess. And uh, Also, um, uh, Marcus also brought in uh, his girlfriend, uh, Angela, to join for the ride, too. So they, they all drove together. They went all the way through... 15 hours to get there until uh, they they almost ran over a cow at night and they swerve over in circles until they stop and lift out a flat tire so they had to stay for the night until the tow truck will come by this morning to fix the tire and be on their way knowing that there's going to be a prom night that's coming up so yeah that's that's another problem so they had to go all the way straight to a paper town known as uh, Eaglo. Uh, that's in upstate New York. Now for those who don't know what a paper town is, and I know it even explains it in the movie, was that it's basically a town that we, that's known to either exist or not. It's population zero, but it also led to uh, you know, copyright infringement for the names of, of those towns. So that's why they no one had ever had lived there for a very long time or they don't even know if they even exist or not so that's that's the issue and that's basically the topic on that so once uh, they arrive at a, an abandoned house I mean hoping that maybe Quinn will be able to find her somewhere because maybe she might have went to a different location here and there or, or somewhere just so they can go back to um, their prom while well, he'll just be able to continue his search um, as it leads to I mean which makes you wonder will he be able to find her or not well I guess you have to find out <laughs> uh, but it is a surprisingly good movie uh, well done for its uh, purpose I mean it's definitely what the story had to achieve about you know, what was it like if you actually meet a girl next door and suddenly she becomes as awkward as, as she can be and but she suddenly becomes very, very, uh, <laughs> very adventurous, and she can do whatever she wants. You know, try to plot her revenge against her friends, and be able to move on with her life, so she don't have to deal with it anymore. And suddenly, you get obsessed with it. I guess that's just how the nature of of her character. Um, but it's really good. Um have funny moments here and there that I can think of. Uh, probably the most moment of them all, which interesting enough had an alternate scene, was that when they went back inside the abandoned souvenir shop, um, yeah, Quinn, uh, Benjamin, and Marcus, just so they don't get too scared, they decided to sing, get this, a Pokemon theme song, <laughs> yeah, from 1998. You know, before they started getting all these spin-offs, so I, just to calm themselves down. And yes, uh, but just before Lacey uh, joins in, and <laughs> and this is where they, she says, you know, that, well, to Ben, because Ben started to f uh, fall in love with um, Lacey, because he wanted to have her as uh, her prom date. He said, I love Pikachu, and, and Lacey says, I'm more of a Charizard. <laughs> yeah, so she loves Charizard. Now, interesting enough, there was an alternate scene where they were actually going to sing the song, uh, get this, that popular song by Taylor Swift called Shake It Off. <laughs> so they were actually doing it. it. It almost looks quite the same, too, because I feel like they must have either dubbed the words or or they just uh, they try to do exactly similar to it just to make it fun. But... I guess maybe that was just the idea. Now, what's even ironic, though, was that, of course, Justice Smith is currently going to be in the new uh, live-action Pokemon film, Detective Pikachu. Yeah, he's going to be the lead of the film. And Ryan Reynolds is going to be playing Pikachu in a whole Deadpool type of way. <laughs> yeah, because you get the idea. I'm willing to check that film out pretty soon, so who knows how that will turn. Um, but nevertheless, it has a great cast. I 
you know, Nat Wolf and Carla Delevingne uh, definitely had chemistry together all the way. It's great that Nat Wolf uh, actually did a very good job playing a whole different role after his appearance in The Fall in Our Stars. Yeah, because it really shows that he can really uh, nail it uh, as the lead. Um, and Carla Delevingne, I mean, given an, an American accent, she, she was pretty awkward crazy, wacky, but she's she's very attractive. I can definitely see that. Very beautiful. Um, and I love all the funny moments that went into here and there and, and all the, the crazy shit that's going on. Um, I guess they were known that they were going to do a whole different movie and also the fact that they focus on high school because unfortunately they're, they're not going to be able to stay too long because this is ba basically their their final year before they graduate and they'll start moving on with their lives. So I guess the whole idea of the story was was to escape from all the the pressure, the peer pressure and all this other stuff going around and just move on with your life so you get to have you know freedom. That sort of way. I guess that's what they were going for. But of course, I mean it was also a journey for Quinn to actually find her. So that way they'll be together, but you never know how that's going to turn out. Hudson Sage is also um, very attractive too, uh, very beautiful. I could definitely see that also. Um, Austin Abrams and Justice Smith are both very good, no doubt about it. Uh, it's great to see a uh, cameo appearance by uh, Enzo Elgort, yes who played uh, Augustus Waters in The Fall Under Stars. So it's nice to see him uh, play a cameo role as the uh, the gas station the Food Mart cashier. You know, just when <laughs> all their friends were about to put together, you know, just getting all their supplies that they need so they'd be able to go on their trip to find Margot. I thought that was really interesting. Because <laughs> yeah, uh, speaking of the, the Fall Under Stars, and I guess I forgot to mention in my review, was that I mean, when it comes to cancer, though, I mean, it's really hard. I mean, think about having the problems of losing your leg or your your body limbs and all this stuff because of it, just so you can become cancer-free, and it really starts to affect you even worse. I mean, cancer really sucks when that happens. And that's how they had to go through it, too, uh, in the movie. Yeah, I mean, it felt real. But this one... Uh, was done quite differently. I mean, the whole thing is about searching for someone who you could find, no matter what happens. I mean, who knows? I mean, you might get the girl, you might not, but that's the case. But nevertheless, it's a good movie. I enjoyed it. So anyway, that's Paper Towns, and I give it four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.